Okay, this is a uh, demonstration of propeller shaft runout measurement. And uh, since I'm alone uh, here doing this video, uh, I don't have someone else to help me uh, turn the propeller shaft. So what I've done is uh, started the engine on this uh, truck, uh, put the transmission in low in first gear and put the transfer case in low and that way the uh, rear propeller shaft here is rotating about one and a half times a second uh, which is the slowest speed I can uh, get it to but it's slow enough that we can hook a dial indicator up and um, get some run out measurements so uh, this is a two-piece uh, propeller shaft as you can see right here this first piece uh, at the back uh, of the truck is aluminum and it goes up to a center support bearing right up there where it changes to a steel drive shaft propeller shaft and then it goes up to the back of the transfer case and we are going to measure run out in several lo several locations on both the the steel uh, propeller shaft and the aluminum uh, propeller shaft. Uh, I'm going to start in the front on the steel propeller shaft and uh, you might be able to see it here right there. I actually have the dial indicator with the roller tip hooked up. So we're going to go up there and uh, take a look at what run out we get. Okay, here we are at the back of the front piece of the two-piece propeller shaft on this 2007 Tundra. Uh, we've got the uh, center support bearing right there and our center U-joint. Uh, and then going up to the front, uh, we've got the uh, transfer case uh, that it hooks to at the front. But I'm gonna start right here in this middle uh, area on the steel uh, propeller shaft and I've got a dial indicator hooked up as you can uh, see and uh, I've got the roller tip plunger uh, riding against the propeller shaft and of course be careful um, with a rotating propeller shaft if you do it like this by yourself um, that you don't get uh, wrapped up in it. Uh, I know all of you are used to working around rotating uh, and moving e moving equipment, but um, this is uh, just a precaution. So uh, if we zoom in and look at this dial indicator, get it focused here. There we go. Uh, we're toggling between uh, zero and 5, 10, 15, oh, it looks like between 0 and about 13, 14 uh, thousandths of an inch. So uh, the maximum run out uh, on this vehicle in the service information is more than that, but uh, it's quite a... Uh, it's quite a thing to see, uh, see that plunger moving up and down with the uh, propeller shaft rotating um, because it's, we assume that these things are round, but they have out of round problems, they have run out problems, and if the run out is excessive, it can lead to a first order uh, propeller shaft speed related uh, vibration. So next, we're going to move this uh, dial indicator to the front of this uh, steel propeller shaft and see what it has for run out. Okay, here we are at the center of the front uh, steel propeller shaft. And we're going to check the run out here, same way. So let's see what we have. And get it to focus. Ah. 
Come on, focus. There we go. Okay, it's toggling between about zero and 25 thousandths of an inch. We're pretty close to the, the uh, maximum allowed here in the middle. And you've got to check the middle uh, besides the ends of the propeller shaft because in, it could in, anywhere it, that has excessive runout could lead to this first order uh, propeller sheet propeller shaft speed related vibration. So think of this propeller shaft as having a more run out in the middle than it does on the ends. Okay, here we are at the rear piece of the propeller shaft on this uh, 2007 Tundra. This is our uh, rear uh, U-joint, the number three U-joint. And we're looking at the back of the aluminum propeller shaft. And got the dial indicator on. And let's zoom in and see what we get. Looks like we're toggling between about zero and 35 thousandths of an inch. Uh, I believe that is more than we're supposed to have. But uh, that does not mean that it will cause a vibration. But if you have a first order propeller shaft speed related vibration and you have excessive runout, you need to fix the runout. Now the, the extra shaking that I have here is because I have the magnetic mount uh, for the dial indicator actually hooked to the uh, exhaust system. Uh, and so we're going to have a little bit of shaking from the engine. But that will not affect the overall maximum and minimum that the uh, that we're looking at as a pattern here. And we're, we're right around 35 thousandths of an inch. So now we're going to move to the middle and see what we get there on this aluminum propeller shaft. Okay, we are at the middle of the aluminum uh, propeller shaft. I've got the dial indicator uh, hooked up with the roller tip. And if we look, it's a little darker here. Um, but it uh, it's toggling between... Uh, zero and about 35 thousandths of an inch. Which I believe is too much for this uh, vehicle. So now we're going to move one last measurement to the front of this aluminum propeller shaft. Okay, here we are at the front of the uh, aluminum propeller shaft. Measuring run out with the dial indicator. And as we uh, zoom in here, it looks like we're toggling between about one, or I'm sorry, between zero and 20. So zero to 20 thousandths of an inch, that's well within specifications. So that uh, portion is good. So we've got six different readings on this uh, rear propeller shaft for runout and check your service manual for maximum runout uh, specifications but if you have anything that's more than the maximum then you need to uh, replace the, the propeller shaft or have it repaired uh, to correct the runout and you need to do this before even thinking about trying to have it balanced this has been a demonstration of measuring propeller shaft runout on the vehicle